in the previous uh, video we saw the structure of liver and now we will take up all the functions which are performed by so functions of liver liver is one of the busiest organs of our body that means it is always performing something or the other which is of vital importance we will classify this under certain heads first it helps in metabolism of protein fats and carbohydrates so we'll take all these three separately so first is metabolism of carbohydrates and all processes which are involved in this they can be written as first synthesis of glycogen that means all that glucose which gets absorbed must be converted into the storage form that is glycogen <coughs> so conversion of glucose to glycogen this process is known as glycogenesis synthesis of glycogen so all that food which we eat and gets converted into glucose that extra glucose is converted into glycogen which is the stored form of carbohydrate so this is stored carbohydrate in our body in case if the glucose requirement is not fulfilled by the diet then glycogen is broken down to release glucose so that it can generate energy that means we are talking of breakdown reaction of glycogen this <coughs> this reaction is known as glycogenolysis so both the processes take place in liver glycogenesis that means synthesis of glycogen and glycogenolysis that means lysis of glycogen so all glucose extra glucose can be converted or if required glycogen can be broken down and this is done in liver second thing if glucose is to be synthesized from a substance other than carbohydrates and other than carbohydrate substances can be proteins or amino acids or fats if these are converted into glycogen or glucose then this process is known as gluconeogenesis that means if glucose is synthesized from something other than carbohydrates then that process is known as gluconeogenesis this also takes place in liver so when we talk of metabolism of carbohydrates all these things are involved the second is metabolism of fats and in this the reaction which takes place is fatty acids and glycerol are converted into fat that means here fat synthesis is taking place this process is known as lipogenesis genesis word is normally used for synthesis here also when we said genesis that was for synthesis here also the same and lysis word is used for breakdown here also the same thing all that extra fat the acid glycerol which we get uh, which is absorbed has to be converted into fat so this process is genesis lipo or lipid genesis if fat needs to be broken down then that process will be called lytic process and we will call it lipolysis both these processes take place in liver itself and that is why we said it helps in metabolism of all carbohydrate fats and proteins so third is metabolism of proteins in 
metabolism of proteins, there are various uh, processes or various steps. First, if amino acid, one amino acid is there. And if amino group from that one amino acid is to be transferred into another one so that a new amino acid can be synthesized, that process is known as transamination. So it helps in transamination. And this would mean that transfer of amino group from one amino acid to the other and that is how all other amino acids which we need can be synthesized. Extra amino acids, extra proteins are to be converted into uh, non-required uh, material or they should be uh, destroyed or uh, removed from the body. That process is known as deamination. Deamination is if an amino acid or a protein is not required, then that should be dissociated. So it would be dissociation of non-required amino acids. In the same, we would also add or we can add one more function that all these extra nitrogen containing substances, that is, it includes amino acid. If we don't need those amino acids, then they are broken down and ammonia is produced and that ammonia is very toxic. So that toxic ammonia has to be converted into a less toxic substance that is urea. So we can write that function along with this because it is actually coming from the amino acid or the proteins which are nitrogen containing substances or we can write it as a separate point also. So here we are writing it as a separate point. It helps in conversion of toxic ammonia into less toxic urea and the reaction or cycle which takes place is known as ornithine cycle or it is also given a term named after the scientist. It is also known as Krebs Hensley cycle named after the scientist who gave this cycle. And this cycle we study when we talk of excretory system where we understand how this ammonia is get, getting converted into urea. And these two points can be linked also and they can be written separately also. One more function performed by liver and as you can see from here all these functions are very important. If fat carbohydrate and pro protein metabolism are affected, then almost every function of our body would get affected. Uh, okay, before coming to this uh, function, we can uh, also talk of one more thing that when we need energy, the first source which supplies energy is glucose. If glucose is less, then glycogen will be broken down. If all glycogen gets consumed, then fats are broken down and the last to be broken down are the proteins. So if nutrient requirement changes, then the order of nutrient consumption, order of nutrient consumption would be glucose first. First is going to be glucose. If glucose is not there, then glycogen. And if glycogen is not there, then fat. And if fat is not there, then protein. So the order is glucose first. Glucose is the first which is used. Second is glycogen. Third is fat. And fourth is proteins. And in all this metabolism, liver plays a very important role. Okay, coming to the next function. In embryonic life, liver 
acts as an erythropoietic organ in embryonic life it helps in erythropoiesis erythropoiesis is production of rbcs rbc production and we need to mention this word embryonic life because after birth this job is taken over by bone marrow and that is why we have to specify that only during embryonic stage it is acting as the erythropoietic organ these are five functions now the next functions uh, would include many others so let us take other functions now the next function is thermoregulation in proper distribution of heat the next one it acts as a storage organ for fat soluble vitamin fat soluble vitamins like a b E, K. They are stored in liver. So, liver is also the storage organ. Liver also helps in formation or synthesis of most of the plasma proteins. Synthesis of plasma proteins. Now, in this plasma proteins, we can have various categories. Those plasma proteins can be albumin, which is required for maintaining the water content. So it holds the water in our blood or fluids. Other category of proteins can be either classified as separate category or we can write it under the same. They are called clotting factors. Clotting factors. And they are also written as a separate category that, that is clotting proteins. And here we will write fibrinogen, prothrombin. So, in some books we can find it written as a separate category or along with the plasma proteins. Next function, it also helps in detoxification. Helps in detoxification. That means if certain toxic chemicals are there in our body, then liver is the organ which helps in removal of this. And now we are taking one of the another uh, very, very important function that is production of bile. This is produced by liver. Bile contains many things. So here we are talking of composition of bile. It has acids which are called bile acids and there are three bile acids. They are written as cholic acid, then deoxycholic acid, Chino-deoxycholic acid. So these three together make the bile acids. The second thing which is there in bile is called salts or they are bile salts. Bile salts. Again, bile salts are three. One is sodium bicarbonate. which is responsible for maintaining the basic pH of bile. We'll write down the pH in a minute. The second is sodium glycocholate and next is again sodium torocholate and these salts are required for emulsification. So here we can say required 
for emulsification. Emulsification of fat. We will talk about this process when we come to digestion of fats. Third thing which is there in bile is known as bile pigment or our bile pigments. Bile pigments. And these bile pigments are two. Bilirubin and biliverdin. These are yellow colored pigment and they, are, they get excreted out along with fecal matter. The yellow color of fecal matter is actually due to these two pigments. Bile is basic and its pH is approximately 8. So basic uh, pH have, is of bile and it has three main things plus water is also there. So it has bile acids, bile salts and bile pigments plus we can write the fourth thing that is water is also there. And this bile is very essential for one emulsification of fat plus during absorption of fat also these salts help and we will take that process in detail. So we have taken the important functions of liver here. And after uh, the understanding these things, we would use the same composition when we talk of digestion process. So in the next uh, section, we will talk about the next gland that is pancreas.